Okay, perfect. Thank you. So, hi everyone. I cannot see you. I'm like, um, good afternoon and like good morning if like you're like following re remotely as I am. Um, and today, um, as like Patrick mentioned, uh, I will be presenting a Rust uh, implementation uh, of like time lock encryption uh, and especially like a like simple time lock client. Um, usually, I like like on my daytime work for Cloudflare. Like this was like a personal time work. Um, and yeah, I will carry on on that. Mainly in the next 15 minutes, maybe less. Uh, we'll see how that goes, uh, given like this uh, some time constraint. Um, so I will start with like a small demo. So like you have like a high overview of what has been built. Then we'll go over like some decision and design in terms of like the CLI. We'll continue to dive deeper in terms of like how the time lock API has been like designed and like changes it involved compared to the current implementation. And then finally, there will be some final words. I mentioned the CLI is like built in Rust, but really this presentation is not that much about like which language this, like this API has been built in, more in terms of like the design consideration, in terms of like how I wanted to make it easy and how I wanted to use um, like time lock. So yeah, first like a short demo, which is not going to be a live demo because I don't need to change screen, but it's going to be um, available uh, via, via some like backups. So in terms of installation, you can install it with Cargo, which is like a Rust package manager. There's also some pre-builds which are like uh, provided. And so you just install D, which is D, like a short, <laughs> short command for that. Then what you can do is like, you would need to add the remote chain. Um, so the remote chain is uh, for instance, like Fastnet, which is the latest um, DRAN mainnet, which allows for time lock encryption. So like here I would use like the Cloudflare um, like endpoint with a long hash that I don't want to print because it's too long. And in any case, you would just copy paste it and not read it from here. So you do D remote, which is the way to management and you get Fastnet, that's it. Then you want to retrieve some randomness. So you would retrieve some randomness for Fastnet. So like Fastnet is your upstream. Therefore, I have a dash U. DRAN dash U Fastnet gives me the randomness. That's that's it. If you want to encrypt towards the future, you would like have a message and like hello D that you would encrypt, let's say 30 seconds in the future. So um, and put it directly into a file. Like nothing more. That's very similar to like existing commands, and we will go into like these choices later down in the presentation. Of course, um, if 30 seconds have passed, you're now in the future compared to like 30 seconds before, and you can decrypt uh, what happened. So you would say decrypt, you decrypt, and you decrypt the file that you've saved, and that's it. Like hello D, um, that does thing. Of course, there's not like the like I don't know shine shininess of if it was like live in a terminal but like definitely you can do it like run the exact same command and have uh, it perform hopefully <laughs> exactly like as i present here today great so you have like a an overview of like the cli and now we will like start to dive a bit deeper into more of like why these command have been chosen and like how it has been designed so first one thing i didn't want any default on the cli um, and this is for like many reasons, but like one of the reasons is like, if you put like two like default, then it's like very hard to like remove it. Or like if there's some API changes, you have some stickiness and et cetera. And so D is like meant to like have configurable remote and provides a list of remotes you can use depending on your use case, but doesn't set any default. Therefore, when you do like D remote add mainnet and your your mainnet endpoint, so in this case, protocol lab endpoint, then you can choose which um, like which remote you want to use. It's also very useful because you can like easily switch between like various networks and that works. It's very similar to Git and we'll go um, a, a bit more of that um, down the line. Another thing is I wanted to have, like well, one thing I didn't have in the main DRAND client is like, it was like very hard to like understand what was the time of the beacon, what time was left, et cetera. And so I wanted like slightly more like output on that. And so you have various output level on the DRAND um, command, for instance. So in here, I will have like a dash L, which stands for dash long. And you have all that in the documentation, but that gives you for like the latest round, 
all the information that you want. So like the round number, the relative time compared to now, like to the time of the current machine when this um, run was produced, the exact time, the randomness, the signatures. And this is really meant for like human consumption. You have also a way to consume it like for JSON APIs or et cetera, which I will present here. But really everyone should have like a different output depending on the use case. And so that's what this is providing. In addition, there's like some like informative errors. So like um, when I started developing uh, D, it was at the time where like there started to be like a switch between G1 and G2 that I think um, Yolan explained a bit earlier. And so sometimes, for instance, like here, if you use a mainnet, it cannot like encrypt because you need to use unchanged signatures. Similarly, if you want to like decrypt a bit too early, you need to know when you can come back to actually like be able to decrypt. So there's like a lot of like work that has been done on like the error message so that the users always know what is happening. And finally, as I explained before, there's like some mimic for existing CLIs. Um, CLI is similar to like websites, so et cetera, like there's kind of like a lot of taste that is like being put into them. And really in terms of like this being a personal product, I didn't want to just overextend it, like creating a whole new uh, CLI design in the CLI API. So I just got a lot of inspiration from CLIs that I know and I like. And so like the first one was Git for the remote management. Therefore, like it's a remote, so you can like show the detail for a specific remote, add it, change the URL whatsoever. Similarly, for like the um, encryption, um, and because like we were using age uh, for the, the hybrid encryption um, Yolan presented before, um, the CLI has like exactly like the same parameters. So, like if you want to decrypt, you can like decrypt like with like armoring and like take content from SDN, in, takes content from a file, really depends, but like it's the very similar um, similar pattern. The only thing that has changed is the recipient instead of like being a file key or like a niche specific thing, it's a time because that's where you want to be able to decrypt. And finally, well, I obviously took some inspiration from DRAND because the client like already existing, this kind of like is inscribed in this ecosystem and therefore like you can like specify a specific round and get the randomness for that round, the main net, some output for JSON. If you don't put the round, you get the latest one, right? Just normal thing. Some very specific Rust, <laughs> Rust Dev tooling that like were helpful through this development. Um, Clap is definitely very good for uh, having like inline like code documentation as well as like documentation for uh, for the end users. And it's also very helpful to like generate mind pages uh, for, for your CLI. And so that's what I've been using in, um, in D. Another thing which was like super useful is like the cross compile, um, like ability like of Rust and like the fact that like without using OpenSSL was like a lot easier to target, for instance, Wasm. Um, and that's one of the things I um, wanted to mention. And finally, in terms of like the performance and the crypto API, um, there are two libraries that like I considered. I started using like ZK Crypto and then uh, I switched over to like um, Arcwork. Um, and one of the concern for that and like why I did that was like for performance. Once again, it's a personal product. I wanted to like to try them out. Um, and so like Cargo uh, provide like some benchmark uh, features, which were like very helpful in terms of like getting informed, inf like getting informed guests in terms of like which one is performing better. Is there some degradation? Should I tweak some um, of my algorithm there? Um, I will go over a bit more detail when we discuss time lock in terms of like what's the difference between the two. And yeah, now it's time for time log. And one of the things with time log is like, it's great to like have the capability like in the paper for how to do time log, but at some point you need to like implement it. And there's a lot of trade-offs. Um, there were already trade-offs in the CLI and now there are like some trade-offs in the API. So one of the main thing I wanted is I wanted this API to be able to work offline. And what I mean to be able to work offline doesn't mean that like, I will need at some point to pull the signatures from the year end, but maybe like, as Yolan mentioned, like <clears throat> BLS and IB um, encryption is like an old idea. And maybe like, I will get my signatures from a file. Maybe I will get it from like a peer to peer communications. And I don't necessarily have a dear end client. So if we do compare the API, like in Go and in Rust that I've implemented, um, in Go, you have like a T-Lock client. Um, which like takes a destination. It's more of like where you want to do the encryption to. You have like a source 
reader from like where you get your information uh, that you want to encrypt and then the RAM number. Um, in REST, it's slightly different. We have exactly the same three, like first three parameters, but there are two additional ones. And the two additional ones are the hash, which is the hash of the chain we're encrypting to, and the public key that we're going to use. And these are important because if we actually take a look at like how these functions can be used in both Go and Rust, um, it seems Rust is a, like a lot more verbose. And it's not because Rust is verbose, it's because it's been like the API has been designed this way. In Go, um, we first take like the network, which is api.demand.sh. Um, well, there's a bit of a hash, but that's the idea. Then we in instantiate the TLO client and then we encrypt and that's it. Um, the source uh, buffer will be encrypted to the RAM number and like put into the destination buffer. The thing is while doing that, there's some side effect that happens. Actually, like the TLOG client will make a fetch to retrieve some information about the chain and the encryption to api.dran.sh. And this is like not really transparent, I'd say, in terms of like the user won't see it, but like there's some side effect and things that will happen um, in the background. And I really wanted to make that explicit. And so um, what happens in REST and like you would like declare a chain, which is like the equivalent of, of the network. You would declare a new client, which is a TLOG client. And you, like as a user, need to retrieve the info before calling the encryption uh, method. So then you pass like exactly the same parameter, the destination, the source, the round number, but you now have the info and the hash uh, public key that you can pass to the encrypt method. And apart from like being super easy in terms of like development, because it's much easier like to debug uh, what happens here, because you don't have to mock the API client, you could also retrieve these information from a file, for instance, if you like it's being shared, or you could like retrieve some like of this information from something which is not DRAND while exposing the same BLS primitives. Um, and that's one of the things I like the main difference in some of the API um, design. Then there was a the whole question of like interoperability. And so one of the amazing thing about DRAND and like the time log is the team is committed to have multiple implementations. And so they have two implementations. Uh, for TLOC, one in Go and one in JavaScript. Um, both of them are interoperable. They have different goals. Like the TLOC is really for like the CLI um, use case and like local use case for like backend, while like the TLOC JS um, has been made like kind of like wonderful <laughs> with the, the example of like timevault.dren.lov. And um, I wanted my implementation to be compatible with those two. So we just don't create a fork and there's no reason why for now we cannot be compatible. Um, one of the things that like I encountered is like the Rage um, implementation. So it's like the Rust implementation for age adds like an additional parameter to like the file, which like just makes it incompatible with the format that like um, the Go or the Jazz implementations are using. Um, and this was due to like a small um, like over constraint um, that was put in those two clients. And so this has been fixed like very fast by the DRN team. And so definitely, um, thanks for all that. Another more, I don't know, low level implementation, um, the, the, the detail that was interesting is like how like the crypto is implemented. And definitely I want to thank uh, people that like worked a lot on like the hash to curve um, RFC because both in terms of like the explanation to um, how like the crypto like is being performed in various libraries, and the specific method that like we wanted to see, which is hash to field and expand message. It was just super smooth to read through that. Um, I think like the, um, the, the the normal like libraries implementations do a great job at like making um, the documentation um, explicit. But the fact that like there's an RFC that like also gives a lot more context um, to, 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 to more newcomers, um, it was like just awesome to see that and very helpful to understand what was happening in both like the TLOC, um, the Go implementation and the JS implementation and how I could make it compatible. However, this RFC standardizes a lot of things, but one thing that is explicitly not standardized in this RFC is how like elliptic curve field serialization works. And this is not standardized. And the fact that it's not standardized is also interesting because like most of the libraries um, just have a different serialization strategy. So for instance, some of them uh, will serialize uh, like in FP12, they would serialize the fields in one order while some will just like do it in like the reverse order, um, which is something which 
is sometimes mentioned, sometimes not mentioned. Um, like you just look at the code and see how that goes. And when the abstraction is like called from bytes or like two bytes, you don't really know what's happening there. Another like consideration was like if it was like big engine or little engine, which changes like the order um, of the serialization. Most of the like crypto library like make a good job at like distinguishing the two and actually being compatible with like big engine and little engine. But that's one thing which was also like um, needed to be like like careful about um, when working with interoperability considerations. And that's it. Um, some final words in terms of like where could we go next? What could have been different? In terms of like what could have been different because it's been like a lot of trade off. I think down the line, the fact that like DRN exposes like a big chain of API is not super friendly when you need to actually add um, the the information into a CLI or pass it to like other developers. And given like the main TLOC um, interface is HTTPS something, you may need like possibly like you could have like a dedicated like host name so that you directly connect to the chain um, that still would need like some confirmation on the user side that they expect the chain ID and et cetera that they want, but it's much, much easier to add later down the line. Similarly, for like the Stenza format, and so Stenza is like the way for age to encrypt, like to encrypt information and put information in the file, kind of like metadata for the file that you're encrypting. Uh, for now, like you have like a mandatory round and a mandatory chain hash. But to be honest, you could also consider not having them. I think there's a, an issue in DRAN to like possibly re like consider like either remove them or like have them more privacy preserving because like the round, you could have it like stateful in the client and like the client could pass it at the time of description similar to, similar to the chain hash you could pass it at the time of decryption um so this might be like interested to like redact them finally in terms of like the cli there's some state for the cli like i wanted to like save the um the remote beacons um maybe we want like a stateless cli so you could like either pass directly the full URL every time you're performing an operation, or you can pass it as environment variables. I still do prefer like the state for one, but that's a consideration down the line um, that I could make. Finally, in terms of takes aways, um, well, there's now a new DRAN implementation and new TLOC implementation, um, both in Rust that is available. Um, there was in terms of the learnings, there's like definitely one academic papers, but like a lot of engineering trade-offs. Um, and that's one thing like I learned uh, through through this process that like one API might not suit um, everyone needs despite being working on the same technology. A third point I wanted to make was um, TLOC is not really constrained to the DRAN API. For now, it's been really sought as like kind of a like demonstration that you can use like time log with the DRAN API but as mentioned before, you might have a server that like does exactly the same thing. Um, and therefore I didn't want to like lock in the DRAN client um, with like the time lock um, decryption. And finally, I want to thank everyone that like answered the multiple questions I had uh, <laughs> during the, this implementation process should be on Slack via emails um, or discussions. And that really improves um, the way like software is made and like really allow for like fast development process. And that's it. If you want some more information, um, there's a like, lot more information and documentation on the repository. And if you have questions, I'm happy to take them.